So hello and welcome to the video. This is a video that has been often requested and in today's video I'm going to show you how I find, plan, optimize and book a tier point run. We're going to cover a lot of ground in this video and it's going to be a long one. And there's some relatively advanced concepts in here that I'm going to talk about but I'll do my best to make it engaging and interesting. I've previously made videos about tier point runs, about XEUs and about ITA matrix and in those videos I started very much from first principles. I'm going to start from a slightly more advanced position in this video, mainly to try and keep it less than three hours long. So please go back to those earlier videos if I've skipped over something you don't understand or you'd like some more detail about the topics being covered. I will though repeat some of the more basic elements of ITA Matrix because, quite annoyingly, the software actually changed very soon after I released my last video. The engine is still pretty much the same under the hood, but it does now look slightly different. And I'll talk about power tools for the first time, an exciting new way of actually booking whatever it is you find in ITA Matrix. So if that sounds good, stick around! Hi, I'm Matt. I've lived in five countries on four continents. I've flown over 1.4 million miles. I've visited over 100 countries, every American state, but I'm nowhere near done. So subscribe and you might pick up some hacks, hints and tips to make your next trip better. And first up is finding a run. Now I'm in a number of Facebook groups, I subscribe to newsletters and I frequently visit the Flyer Talk tier point run thread, all of which are good ways of kicking out leads that you might want to explore. But these days I generally sniff out my own opportunities because it's relatively simple to do so and I find it quite good fun. So before I share exactly what I do, let's talk a little bit more about what we're actually looking for. A tier point run is a trip where one of the primary objectives is to collect a large number of tier points at the lowest possible cost. The more tier points at the lower the cost, the better. This almost always means an XEU, by which I mean a trip that starts outside of the United Kingdom, and it almost always means a trip to the United States, as BA's One World sister airline American has a density of route network in the USA that allows you to block out multiple legs in order to build up the tier point count. Unfortunately, it's really quite tricky to do anything equivalent to this going east towards Asia. I say almost always, as BA has extended the double tier points promotion it offers when you book a holiday through them. That does add options, but an XEU to the United States is always going to be very competitive when it comes to gathering a large block of tier points. We'll talk about the fare rules later, but the sorts of trips we're looking at will allow one, sometimes two stops within Europe and two stops within the United States. So you're pretty much guaranteed to be able to get 720 tier points out of a trip that starts on the near continent to the US, or 800 tier points from a trip that starts on one of the further destinations that BA describes as a short haul plus destination, which is 80 tier points away from London. These short haul plus destinations are generally more than a thousand miles away from London, except for Malaga, Faro and Gibraltar, which are exceptions. Head for Points, as always, has a very handy list. The link will be in the description below, and you get to know them pretty quickly when you start playing around with tier point runs. And to find opportunities, I use Google Flights. It's a very simple website where you declare where you want to start from, and the site will tell you the cheapest fare available to pretty much every destination in the world. So let's start with Dublin. Toggle to business class, and just click on the map. Leave the dates blank for now. And you'll get a map with prices to each destination shown. I said don't worry about dates as it always defaults back to this one week trip option whenever you click on the map. It's quite annoying. But now you're here, you can change the dates. Quite a few handy options are built in, but as the best tier point runs typically have a six month advanced purchase rule, none of these defaults are particularly helpful. It's early August as I record this, so let's pick a weekend in March. Easter is at the end of March, so let's avoid that and let's see what we get. 
So in addition to this six month advance purchase rule, the best tier point runs usually have a requirement for you to travel during the middle of the week. So I'll anticipate that in my date selection. Again, these are things you get to know pretty quickly when you do this a few times, but by all means play around with it yourselves to see if you can find other opportunities that work. You can shift the focus to the region you're interested in, which is the west coast of the US, and you'll see the fares. Now these will default to fares available on all airlines, and we're only interested in one world options, as those are the flights where we'll be earning tier points. So add this filter and we'll see the one world opportunities from Dublin. And from a quick pan around, £1,390 to San Jose is one of the cheaper options. That's not brilliant for a tier point run, as you're only getting 720 tier points at £1.93 each. But that's the sort of pricing that we've been looking at for the last year or so. Fargo looks interesting. Now, I've been in real life and it's not that interesting. But another thing that you learn from doing this is that fares have a maximum permitted mileage built in. Now, I know from experience that it's very difficult to build a tier point run that delivers the maximum possible tier points to a destination that is in the middle of America. You just have to fly too many miles to achieve it. I made a video which talks about this NPM restriction up here, along with a couple of other advanced principles of tier point running. So check that out for more of a discussion on that topic. Hawaii used to be a favourable destination that would yield even more tier points, but I can't remember the last time that pricing there was reasonable. It's also one more six hour flight further on, which can be quite demanding on the body and the aircraft you fly on get worse the further west you go. So between those three points, I haven't even really looked at a trip to Hawaii for some time now. So then it's a question of cycling through the originating cities and seeing if anything better crops up. Budapest was a favourite for a while, but doesn't seem so good now. Amsterdam, Warsaw, Stockholm, nothing brilliant is showing up. You can save a bit of time as pricing seems to be done by country. So Frankfurt, Hamburg and Berlin are all likely to have the same pricing. And that means you can search just one city per country, which does speed things up a bit. Depending on your mindset, this bit is either extremely tedious or it's excellent fun. So all of those cities have been short haul destinations and £1.93 per tier point from Dublin is the best that we found. But remember, there are also short haul plus destinations which deliver at least 800 tier points. And that means that a West Coast price would need to be less than £1,540 to deliver a price per tier point better than the £1.93 we saw from Dublin. Now, Sofia and Bucharest are traditional starting points, but neither of them are brilliant right now. But again, you can spend quite some time working through these short haul plus destinations to see if anything better crops up. Don't forget Cairo, which presents some logistical challenges, but is often quite a good place to start. And ignore Algiers. You think the pricing is good, but you need a multiple entry visa to Algeria to get in at the beginning and the end of the trip. So it's actually a really tricky place to start from. So Dublin to San Jose is going to be my target from the 7th to the 12th of March. I chose San Jose, even though there are a couple of cheaper options in that region. And again, doing so comes from experience of doing this in the past. San Jose is a decent sized airport that's going to give you a few options to work into your itinerary. Bakersfield and San Luis Obispo are much smaller and less well connected, so they are less easy to work into a schedule if you choose to end your trip there. And you'll probably be spending a day or two or three or four in your turnaround city, so a bigger city is probably worth targeting as there's actually something to do there while you turn around. So we have a target. The next step is to plan the trip and it is time to step into the matrix. Very briefly, Google bought matrix back in 2010 and it provides the backbone for the Google flights website we just explored. It's also a platform which supports a number of other travel businesses. The interface we use here is provided by Google for free and it is absolutely fantastic that they do this. It's free for us to use, but it is not free for Google to provide, as they have to devote significant processing resources to give us results to the queries that we put in. And that drives the occasional contraction of functionality. Several years ago, you could search for flights departing from multiple cities across multiple countries. Now we can only search for multiple destinations across countries. 
Now just after my last video was released, that version of Matrix was closed down, reportedly because the servers it was running on needed to be retired. But a new one was rolled out, and I believe that this was one of those projects that Google employees are allowed to spend 20% of their working week working on. This new version looked a little different, but it was essentially the same. And indeed, the old version is still working. Those servers don't seem to have been retired just yet. Now, I suspect that the rollout of this new version was used as an opportunity to reduce the processing resources available on the back end. It feels like you're given a certain amount of processing time when you enter a query, and Matrix will give you whatever it's able to find within that processing time. Even if it hasn't found the cheapest option, and evidence for this will be along shortly. Even so, it is an excellent resource, even though very little money has been spent on the user experience. If something goes wrong, you get very minimal feedback as to the nature of the problem. I'll explain as I go, but to counter this, I now go through the matrix process very slowly and very progressively, adding complexity step by step, so if something goes wrong, it's very easy to rewind a step and diagnose what the problem is. That allows me to work out why the computer said no. So let's get into it. Now, I went through the mechanics of every one of these options in my last video, and they've not really changed, even if it looks a little different. So I'm gonna focus on the features we need to plan a tier point run. The return and one way tabs are essentially the same, and I'll come back to that multi-city tab. So we're looking at Dublin to San Jose. There's a few San Jose's around the world, but I know the one I want is SJC. We'll use the routing and extension codes in a moment, but remember we want to go step by step and add detail to our query progressively. Now, instead of going straight for the dates we found, I'm gonna cast the net a little wider and look for all of the dates in March and also widen the duration of the trip a little bit. Matrix allows this far more readily than Google Flights. If we were happy-ish with the fare we found, we'll be even happier if we find something better a few days either side of the original dates. We want business class. These two sections are not that interesting for what we're doing, so I'm gonna leave them both on no limit. We're starting in Dublin, so the fare is going to default to euros, so let's convert it into GBP. Click search, and you'll get the results. Now we're looking for the 7th to the 12th of March, which is five nights, and this is showing a higher fare. And I think this is one of those examples where the query returned its results before it found the cheapest option. Let's click on that though, and that triggers further processing, and wouldn't you know it, a better fare has been found, and a fare very similar to the £1,390 we're targeting. Exchange rates do move, and depending on the specific routing chosen, the fees added by the airports en route can make this fare change, but this is clearly the fare that we were targeting. Now the reason why I may not have found this fare with the original query is that I've searched every airline. You can see all of the options across the top. I'm only interested in One World Airlines because they're the ones that deliver the tier points. So let's go back to the main input page and add an extension code. This field allows you to narrow your search and I'm only interested in Alliance One World. So let's plonk that into both the outbound and return legs. I talk a lot about extension and routing codes in that earlier video and there is a lot you can do. Everything else stays the same and as if by magic, that lower fare is now delivered on the first results screen. A quick tip, you can change the fields here without needing to go back to the original search screen. If you're looking across multiple months, it's a much quicker way of doing it than going back and forth. So drilling back through, and you now get to choose between the four One World members through which you can buy this ticket. Pricing varies, but going back to a recent video about how BA is changing the way you earn avios when you fly with them, this is where you can choose to follow an AA ticketing pathway rather than a BA ticketing pathway to be able to earn more avios on your fare. There are three ways of visualizing the result. I like time bars, but you can also show complete trips. This is handy for quickly seeing connection options and individual flights lets you pick what you want leg by leg. I'll follow this through so that we can just check that final pricing. This section will then show you those fare rules. They are agony to look through, but there's a couple of bits in here which are significant and are worth knowing. 
by all means read it all yourselves, but most of it is irrelevant gibberish. The first interesting one is Category 2, which shows you which days you can fly, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday outbound, and Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday back. So that means you have to stay a weekend and it's a minimum of four nights. If the fare shoots up when you're fiddling with it, it's probably because you've broken one of these rules. The rules do vary from fare to fare, but this is fairly standard. Section 5 includes that six-month advanced purchase restriction I mentioned. It's actually 180 days rather than six months, but there you go. Category 8 is stopovers. That is a stay in an intermediate city of greater than 24 hours. And a fee is usually chargeable if you add that length of stay. This will probably take the fare out of the bounds of reasonableness for a tier point run, but it could be just perfect for you if you wanted to spend time in a city as part of a longer trip. Category 9 is transfers. Now a transfer is a stay in an intermediate city of less than 24 hours. These are free, they can be excellent fun, and you're allowed two in Europe and two in the United States. We'll look at this in more detail when we try and optimise what we found, but this is in essence what makes the tier point run, as it allows you to add legs within the United States, which whacks up the tier points you collect. Having four transfers is often quite hard to achieve because that maximum permitted mileage kicks in, but it is sometimes possible. There's a lot more in the fair rules which I could trouble you with, but I won't, mostly as I don't understand most of it myself. Spare a thought for the days before computers when travel agents used to have to work through all of this to make sure any tickets they were issuing complied fully, but now computers do it all for you. You don't need to know any of this, but knowing that it's here may help you diagnose a problem if something crops up that prevents you completing what you want. Right, we have the fare we're interested in, Ring Fenced in Matrix. It's actually a slightly better fare than the one we were expecting. This is what airlines think sensible people would want to do between those two cities, but clearly none of us are sensible people. We want to elaborate things more, so it's time to optimise. Back to the query screen, and let's lock in these dates. Adding legs will increase the processing demands, so let's counteract that by narrowing the date range that we want to be searching across, and that'll increase the chances of us finding the best options. And having done that, before we do anything else, let's just check again that that fare still holds. Remember, we want to go step by step progressively with small changes at every stage. And we get the same fare. Let me just go back to the time bars because I do prefer them. So back to the query, and let's try to get four stops in. And I do this first with XXXX in the routing codes. This adds stops, but they're any stops. You're not being specific about where you want the stops to be. Just the outbound, as we're going step by step, and the fare goes up. This could be a maximum permitted mileage issue, it could be an availability issue as you do need I-class seats to be available for this fare to work, or it could be that the processing ration ran out before it found the best opportunities. This may not be fatal to getting four stops on the outbound leg, but let's go back to the query and delete an X. And with three stops, the fare goes back to where we want it. Each airport transited can add fees to the routing, so the price will wobble a little bit. It's in the ballpark of what we want, though, so no worries. But you can see we're not getting the right options. We're getting two stops in Europe and only one in North America, certainly before the fare jumps up. Now, for some reason, the details of the flights have disappeared from this screen, which is really, really annoying. But never mind, don't despair. We know the first stop we want is in London, so let's go back to the query and switch that first X to LHR, so it's Heathrow and then two further stops to San Jose. And the fare stays the same, and we get some slightly more interesting options. Not that many, though, and we're not being offered the East Coast as a landing point in the United States, which is what we need in order to maximise the tier points. But the fare is holding. So let's go back again and add XXLHR to the return leg. Remember, it's going to be in the other order, because Heathrow is the last stop before Dublin, and see if the fare holds. It does. Still not too much exciting outbound, but we do find some return options which give us the flight pattern we want. LA, then Boston, then London. Still not what we want outbound though. So let's go back to the query and force an East Coast stop at JFK, just as an example.
and I'm going to force us through Boston on the way back too, mainly to limit the size of the query for that return portion to give us as much processing time as possible for the outbound. And as if by magic, we find an Heathrow to JFK to LAX to San Jose outbound, which doesn't shift the fare. So alongside that inbound routing, we found a fare which delivers 720 tier points for £1,362, slightly less than we found on Google Flights. And that's for a destination found largely at random on a date selected largely at random. And it includes two legs on the A321 Sharklet, which is the AA domestic transcon plane with the live flat seats in business class. And you also get a leg on Alaskan Airlines too. I think that's pretty good. But can we do even better? We're allowed two stops in Europe and we've only used one each way. If we go back to the query page and try and work that extra stop in, we struggle. Putting the usual suspects of Madrid and Helsinki between London and New York can work, as can adding Manchester between Dublin or London, or some or all of these on the way back as well. But on this occasion, I can't get them to work. You'll also note I've swapped Boston for New York on the route back because I know there are more flight options out of New York. No dice, but there's minimal user feedback, so frustratingly you just don't know why. It could be a fairing issue, it could be maximum permitted mileage, you don't know. It's just a case of hacking around, trying to find something that works, and it often will work. So let's try and optimise this just a little bit further because I don't love that short overnight stop in LA on the outbound. And I said I'd come back to the multi-city page, which I call Annoyance Central. It's very fiddly. But if you break the simple return fare that you found into multi-city stops, it lets you finesse the parts of that trip far more precisely. You may want to throw your computer out of the window midway through the process, but stick with it. So I want LA to be the connecting point in a leg, so I'm going to split my itinerary into three. Dublin to New York firstly, New York to San Jose with LA as the intermediate stop in that leg, then San Jose all the way back to Dublin as the third leg. I'll keep this all in one block to minimise the processing time, but I'm actually not unhappy with the routing that it organically found us. Make sure you have Alliance One World in every extension box and play close attention to the dates. They can be really annoying when you have more than one flight on a day because Matrix can sometimes reorder them. Just keep an eye out for it. Click search. And we've lost the fare. Now this bit has taken me several hours to work out myself, but Matrix seems to be insisting on plonking me on an Aer Lingus code share from Dublin to London, and that seems to be nobbling the whole thing. But I know the flight numbers from Dublin to New York that worked before, so by forcing those flight numbers into that first section, we get the fare back, and I am really chuffed that I was able to work that out. And on that second leg, you now get the option for a much longer stay in Los Angeles. Still less than 24 hours though, so it qualifies as a transfer rather than a stopover, and it doesn't blow out the fare. The multi-city is really frustrating, it's incredibly annoying, but if you persevere and change things very progressively, you will get there. So we've got it working, but let's see, just to illustrate, if we can extend that stay in LA on the return leg. So first, let's split that return leg into two with LA as the middle leg of the first sector of the return. Then you can include some constraints in that extensions box. It's very hard to see, but I've added this. Min connect 18 hours, a max connect of 24 hours, and I've retained the one world alliance constraint, all of them separated by a semicolon. You may need to do this in Word and cut and paste that into the box because it's quite fiddly to get it in. This means my transfer must be between 18 and 24 hours in LA, and I don't want it to be more than 24 hours because it'll turn into a stopover which will blow out the fare. Click search, and the query breaks, and it's time to think like a computer. So by adding a minimum of 18 hours to Los Angeles, that means it's now not possible to depart from Boston on the next leg of that multi-city trip on the 12th. 
So if you shove that leg forward a day, which is now necessary, as if by magic, the fare holds and you can extend your time in Los Angeles. You could instead do this for Boston on the way back or for New York on the way out. It's very difficult, perhaps impossible, to do it for both US legs outbound or return because it's likely to extend the duration of the leg beyond what is ticketable. That's a very little known rule, but you can breach it with two longer stops on an outbound or return leg. But you should be able to do it for one of them. So there you go, a 720 tier point run with decent length stops in LA in both ways for slightly less than the price we originally found on Google Flights. And if you break this out further and use all six multi-city legs that are available, it may be possible that way to find a way of squeezing an extra European leg in, which would build the tier points even further. So you have a fare you like sitting in Matrix. How do you actually book it? Well, there are three ways. The first way is to call the airline or a very good travel agent. You may need this little section of information to help them duplicate the fare that you found. Second is to use bookwithmatrix.com. If you hit Control A on the Matrix results page, then Control C to copy everything, cross over to the site and Control V in the receipting box on that site, it will decode what you found and present you with a couple of booking options. They're usually American sites which will price things in dollars, but it does usually work. There is, though, a better way. Power Tools. If you Google Power Tools for Matrix, you'll find a Google Chrome add-in which does magical things. It has to be Chrome, and I've no idea whether it would work on Apple devices. And this is my laptop, but I expect it would work on a phone too, even though the screen's a bit small and it'll get a bit fiddly. If you re-enter the matrix, having loaded the add-in, you'll notice a small strip has appeared at the top of the screen. I'll reinstate that run we're looking at, and on that final screen, you'll now see all sorts of clutter to the right. Lovely, wonderful clutter. Each of these is a way of sending that routing you found to an airline or an online travel agent to complete the booking. Before you do so, you may need to do a little bit of tinkering. If you click on the passengers at the left of the band at the top of the screen, you'll be able to select the number of passengers you want to push to the booker. You need to do this even if you've already put multiple passengers into the matrix query. Similarly, the top right allows you to force a specific cabin. You may need this if you have a mixed cabin booking. I've never had to tinker with it. And the settings button will reveal lots of options. I've not had to tinker with these, but I think they change the defaults of what's going on behind the various options you see on that main screen. So you'll probably know which airline is the one that you want to be booking through. It's gonna be American in this case because it's an American ticket. So let me send it to the UK American site. And it doesn't work. And to be completely honest with you, I don't know why. Now the fallback is to call the airline and make the booking. So all is by no means lost. It may be that what we've done here is just too complicated for the website to catch. It's an allowable bookable fare, but those lengthy transfers may just be too much for the website to catch. So I created a slightly simpler version of this itinerary, sent it through to the American UK link, and it worked. You then need to enter the passenger details and you'll be taken through to payment. I booked a similar run very recently where I ended up with eight legs, no particularly lengthy transfers, but I was able to send it to American's UK site and get it booked and ticketed without having to speak to one of those irritating humans. This is a free site that is available to you, so it's annoying that it didn't work, but it is by no means fatal. You've still got the option of calling the airline, but most times I think it will work. And you'll see there's plenty of other booking options as well, including online travel agents the further down. It's just a case of clicking away at the various options until you find one that actually hits. So there you go, how to find, plan, optimize, and book a tier point run. Thanks for watching. Have fun finding your own exciting adventures. Please leave me a like. It is the least you can do. And leave me a comment. Are you now going to spend the rest of the day looking in Matrix? 
subscribe if you're new and if you'd like to support what I'm doing more directly and join a community of tier point runners who do this sort of thing regularly there is a Patreon link in the description below. Thanks again for watching I'll see you all again soon. Goodbye.